Yep, hello, this is Music Bear here, and um, this video is uh, a request. Um, uh, I was asked on um, our forum how to teach you um, uh, notes in elements, and this is what we're going to achieve, but we're going to do it in two different ways. So this is there's several uh, uh, fine um, tutorials online uh, how to do it this way and that is with the detune tool but the detune tool um, does for instance not work with um, uh, uh, VSTS uh, instruments uh, and um, we also want to detune those sometimes. Also, we can't detune uh, some of the uh, instruments in elements that is based on VSTs. So let's just listen to what it is we are going to um, to produce. Um, goes like this. Right. So that is the sound that uh, we are aiming for. Um, detuning um, the uh, notes uh, um, that we have uh, in the piano roll. Let's change to this guy here and open a piano roll. Um, I just double clicked on the uh, uh, on the, uh, the tablet. So that opens piano roll. I could also have Left, uh, right clicked and chosen from the context menu open in piano roll um, but that was not it um, let's see we have to move this guy a little bit uh, because we want to have this here visible this is called without tooltip um, the detune tool and um, hmm. Um, it works like uh, acti like uh, it, it activates the, the the automation editor. So when I click here in the note, after I have chosen this here the detune tool, hey, hey it came. Um, pitch bend mode, shift T. Fine. Um, I don't know why it was didn't appear the first time. Mm, strange. Here you see we open the automation editor and we already have a point here at the beginning of um, our um, uh, our edit and now we can make it go a little bit longer note so let's start by making it sound uh, as it is on uh, this uh, a what is it? It's on a uh, tree, I think. Uh, and then we will have it to go up. And here he also wants to see what happens here uh, on the actual note. You can see that when I move this guy here, you can see how the um, the visual representation on the node uh, is shown to change as well. So let's let it go up there and then we can let's say we keep it there for a while. Um and uh, it's not completely straight there. Uh and then we will have it to go uh, down. That's a lot down, right? So let's see we let it go down to the um C2. Uh and we will then let it go back to um, um, to our uh, base, and finally we will let it shoot up and appear. Let's move it here. That's a little bit too much, isn't it? I just let it stop here at F4, I think. Yeah. So. That will give us this shape here, and let's listen to how that shape is expressed. So, um, we got 
not what we expected. But we can also um, let's just take it. We can also use different forms. Um, now you can see that we have a um, a Bayesian curve, and it sounds a little bit different. We also saw that the representation in the um, in the editor actually does not look like what is shown here in piano roll, because in piano roll we see the uh, the time here on the x-axis and the note that we are uh, well coming from and we are uh, semitone sorry not the note the semitone that we are coming from and that we are um, reaching but in the editor uh, automation editor we can manipulate that curve with the tension and we can choose different kind of uh, progression. We could also do something like this and that will go like that. But then of course we just might as well have used other notes. So having discrete uh, progression is actually not very um, um, constructive. We uh, we want to slide it uh, with a slanting uh, curve. So it is either linear or it is cubic uh, Hermit uh, progression. That is uh, interesting in this case. Uh, and since we can achieve uh, the the um, uh, the, f the shape of uh, linear progression with uh, our uh, cubic uh, Hermite progression by changing the tension. You can see it's changed just back to the. Then it's actually m most of all uh, the cubic Hermite progression that we're interested in when we're doing this. This can also be automated. Remember that we can automate this tension wheel here. So it can go That is um, one way to do it. Um, but not the only way. Um, because if we go back to our song editor, um, we will see that uh, this guy here was in fact a triple oscillator. But it could have been uh, something else. And if we take um, our... Um, um, we can go in here and that was triple oscillator. Now we go to the LB 302 and we take um yeah why not so we're going to say send to active instrument and that will change it to um this here the lb302 so brilliant let's hear how that sounds we'll just play it from here i guess it here and then Well, it was a bit low, but uh, never mind about that. There was no change, right? We have no change in uh, uh, in uh, the uh, in the pitch. But if we go in here and take a look, this time I'm going to do it like this, so you can see it. Right-click, open in piano roll. We still have this. What's going on? because the LB302 is based on a VST 
and for VSCs we cannot use this. This is not something that we can uh, can use the the pitch bend tool because VSCs uh, works with a different um, uh, model of sound and that can't be detuned uh, with this MIDI tool. So what to do, what to do? Well, the what to do is to uh, make an automation track in Song Editor. And we do that simply here by adding a uh, automation track. And then we'll have to go in here and we will go to automate the pitch. Uh, just drag it over there. So I hold control and drag the pitch into my automation track and drop it there. And if I now press a key here, you can hear how uh, turning the pitch wheel will change the pitch also for a VST based instrument. And that is exactly what we're going to, to, to utilize. And we'll actually, just for the sake of fun, uh, do it with uh, a recording of what I am uh, doing with the instrument. First, because we want to have a little bit more uh, variation, we will turn this here into 12 semitones. So what happens when we, are, we, we um, change the range is that we get more uh, the span of the, the, the pitch change gets larger. Let's try here. It almost sounds like a very old um, airplane uh, going into a dive I don't know uh, <laughs> it sounded pretty strange <laughs> um, so let's just <laughs> try to um, record this so I'll just go in here and I'll say set clear record and now you can see it got this record um, point here so it shows that now it is in record mode and I can go back to my pitch wheel here uh, and I will have to go here and set this guy here um, to um, stay on top because uh, if I don't when I uh, click here on uh, the piano roll it will disappear um, sorry not the piano roll, the, the song is it will disappear uh, beneath and I can't really move this guy here because I want to have a little bit of the speed before uh, so I can get down here and do something with this grass and we'll start here in this pitch here uh, let's just roll it oh that was it it was over <laughs> uh, Right, then we have to. Um, that was very short. Uh, we have to change the record here. Now you can see here we have points for what I have done here in. Um, whoop! It uh, disappeared from me there. What's going on? that guy stay on top hmm. interesting uh, pretty annoying um, so what we now have here is this just take it back to start here. and we have to change our wheel here a bit Uh, 
automate um, the pitch of a um, an instrument that cannot be pitched in um, uh, piano roll and that is how you can do that and get uh, a um, pitch shift in any instrument in uh, elements of course you could also just do this instead of using the pitching tool <laughs> of using the pitching tool but um, that is completely up to you what what kind of of uh, change you want to do um, of course we could have done manually uh, changes to the uh, um, to the curve uh, as well um, uh, but that again is completely uh, up to you how you want to do it. Now you know that you can do it uh, and you know how to do it. Then it's uh, up to you um, in which way you want to do it. Pitching in uh, elements and uh, that is all. Bye bye. <laughs>